Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Kagam. Okay, so today I have another new arrivals video for you guys. You told me you really, really like these videos. Um, I'm glad you do because I like them too. I love looking at new arrivals. So let's start off with Fendi. Fendi have lots of new arrivals that we need to get through. Let's start off first with these new like multi-colored marbled um, bags and ready to wear i saw these on instagram i was like oh let me go on the fendi website see what's going on and these are brand new so these are in the new section i think these are interesting i must say i feel like it's that it's quite overwhelming to look at like when you're looking at it you're like whoa maybe you're gonna start seeing things you know in the marble in the marbling but i think it's just such a fresh unique take i think for ready to wear and for handbags i feel like on the handbags it looks really good because i think that there's a marble sunshine shopper tote i think there's a marble peekaboo i think that this is interesting and i think it's fresh and different now some of you were like hey when the fendi and skims collab came out you didn't do a video on it and you like fendi what happened um i wasn't really interested in that collab i really liked by the way the collab that they um did with nikki but around that time i wasn't really taking youtube seriously but i remember following that collab and being quite excited about that um you know and it's nothing personal it's not like i don't like kim or anything so i, do, I used to watch the kardashians all the time and their shenanigans are hysterical i i don't know i just i hate to say it but I don't know, I just didn't feel that collab for Fendi. I know it was very successful, good for them. Um, I just wasn't personally interested in it. It wasn't inspiring or interesting to me. And like I said, no shade towards Kim, but I like Fendi, I just wasn't interested. However, when I saw these new arrivals from um, Fendi, this like marbling effect, I'm very, very, very intrigued. If any one of you is going to be a Fendi boutique or a Fendi concession, what do these look like in person? Do they look as interesting as I think that they look or are some of them just like maybe I don't know do they look kind of weird and creepy or do they actually look good there's also a marbled peekaboo um that on the outside looks red but inside like the lining is marbled um I'm interested um in this because I want to see what this looks like in person hopefully they'll still be around when I go to Paris like I would love to see just like the texture in person because I think sometimes like some things look great on the internet and then when you see them in real life you're like no <laughs> this is not going to work and it doesn't look good i think that these look really interesting i think a lot of people will be will gravitate to the darker blue colorway for the marbling i personally prefer the brighter color the red orange marbling i think that's very interesting one thing i like about fendi is they keep things different and interesting there are more new arrivals from fendi if you're interested they have these new trainers called the fendi match trainers i think in the uk these are like under 700 pounds these are interesting to me they seem and this is from the women's wear collection they seem like a very interesting response to the louis vuitton trainers which are actually just called trainers even though they are trainers they're called the louis the lv trainers and that's from the menswear um, side of the business so these are called fendi match um they're made from suede interesting it's just so interesting to see fendi um try new things like going a little bit more casual you know releasing trainers you know when i think of fendi i think of you know goes without saying i think of like exotics i think of fur i think of dresses like form fitting i think of great leather i wouldn't necessarily think oh my god trainers is like the first thing you know when i think of fendi so i think it's really fun and fresh that they're trying new things these trainers look interesting um and again it's one of those things that you need to see in person more new arrivals that they have they have these um new sunglasses called fendi feel these are very very cute i think these are going to be so hot on instagram i think they're perfect for tiktok um I definitely think that these are like another Gen Z thing. Like this would be great for like younger consumers of the brand. I think they will love these. I think these are really, really nice. I also like the, the way they are priced. I must say, I think Fendi's accessories are priced well. Their ready to wear is pricey. But I do think that their accessories are priced well. I also like the price of the Fendi match trainers. I think that they're priced very well for luxury brands and I'm happy with the pricing. There is this kind of feeling, I think, amongst a lot of people that Fendi is expensive. And I think sometimes when you actually go through the website, you see it's not necessarily expensive per se, like in terms of luxury brands, but they do believe in themselves with a lot of things and they will be pricing accordingly. But I must say, I do like the look of these. I think these are really interesting. Do you remember a few, a few videos ago, I was telling you about the Olok single earring and how I was interested in it. So the Olok is this new motif 
from the house that was designed by uh, one of Venturini's daughters. She's called Delfina de Letras Fendi. She's a jewelry designer in her, in her own right. And of course, you know me, I love observing um, the business side because I find that very interesting. It seems to me that she is Venturini's heir apparent. That's the feeling that I get. If you follow their, their social media, like Fendi's official Instagram, um, and if you follow, um, yeah, follow Fendi's official Instagram, if you see the way Skims was launched, like, um, Deletris was there a lot. So it was like Deletris with her mom, Sylvia Venturini Fendi, and Kim Jones. It was like them three, like through the Skims launch. Because I, was, well, I wasn't interested in the collab, but I was interested in the launch from like a business point of view. Um, and I think that they executed so well and it was done so brilliantly. Like the collab was a huge success, you know, there's no doubt about it. And similarly, the Fendace swap, that was a massive success. And if, again, if you follow the Fendi um, social media, you'll see that her daughter like had a very prominent role. So this was her original design for Fendi. Um, I am, so I'm actually, I'm actually subscribed to the Fendi um, email newsletter and that one actually tells you a lot of information about new launches and things like this. So using um, Deletris' new design, which is the O-Lock, they've actually um, expanded beyond just jewelry. Another new arrival you guys need to know about are these O-Lock sunglasses. I think these look really cool. I think it's very edgy and cool. One thing I like about Fendi, I must say, just like from the business point of view, I like that they have their stuff organized. Like if you are a Fendi VIP or you shop at Fendi a lot, the brand is in safe hands. I think they're gonna celebrate 100 years in a few years time from now. Like you have Kim Jones doing women's wear, doing couture, doing fur, I think he also does fur as well. And then you have Venturini doing men's wear and accessories and then it's clear that there is an heir apparent from the family to like take over Venturini's role should she ever decide to retire and Kim Jones can continue doing his thing, you know, designing women's wear. It's a very cohesive, like well executed succession plan. Um, you know, you know, no disrespect to, you know, Big C or Big H, but I've, I, I, we don't really know what's popping in that regard. We just know that their family members work at Big H and they're there. But with Fendi, they're very visible and you can see that they're there. And that's something I really like about them. So anyway, I think her designs look really cool um, and it should be very interesting to see. We're gonna be seeing more of her, I think. Um, and I think that they've been clever in how they have kind of slowly integrated her into being one of the faces of Fendi because now it's really Kim Jones, Venturini, and Delfina Deletris Fendi. So it's very interesting to see what's going to be going on. I must say, I think that um, the, those Olaf designs, they look, they, they've been looking really, really good to me. So I can't wait to also see them in person. And if I like that single earring in person when I go to Paris, I'll definitely probably end up buying it because I did really like it and thought it was very cute. Um, so yeah, there are like lots of that. There's tons and tons and tons of neutrals and lots of cream and off-white um, ready to wear. Um, of course, their new fur arrivals because you know Fendi marched the beat of their own drum honey, aka. <laughs> and at this point, they're the king and queen of fur. Um, and they are there are the two new fur arrivals I wanted to tell you about. There's this mink cape. I love this. I live in a hot country. It was like 32 degrees Celsius today. I could not wear this, but I do think it's great. They also have this nylon and mink um, gilet. Um, and in case you're watching and you don't know, this is real fur. So please just be aware of that. Don't be upset now. Okay, it is what it is. So yeah, they do have these new, these two fur um, arrivals that I thought were really nice. I just wanted to mention them to you. I know there's some of you who do like fur who have told me. So if you're interested, they're there. Um, I think they look really, really beautiful. Again, I cannot wear them because it's so hot here. <laughs> okay. It would be an absolute waste to wear them here. But if I was like living in Europe for like three months, I would absolutely get a Fendi fur coat. Like I have no qualms about it. Probably would end up getting one. So yeah, tell me what you guys think of these Fendi new arrivals. What are your thoughts um, in general on Fendi's like ready to wear, their accessories, their bags? I think there's also this... Um, baguette that they're calling i think they're calling it the midi baguette or something like that there's this one as well so i just wanted to you know show that one to you fendi at the moment are doing very well with the, this really interesting neutral color palette you know neutrals are still massively big um and people love neutrals people love caramel cognac cream off-white like milkshake white clothing people seem to really be into that at the moment they're doing a lot of that even on their website saw them like advertising ski wear 
they have lots of like apres ski clothing you know for this time of year maybe there are people who are going to be going to like verbier you know in switzerland or somewhere like that and they probably will you know need to have some of these garments and things like that so then your arrivals are fresh and fun and different there are a lot of you who tell me all the time in the comments that you want to be different you don't want to be like everyone else you don't want to look like everyone else with the same stuff well i've shown you a ton of new arrivals from fendi that i think are fresh fun vibrant and different and i think you'll really be into them okay so there's some other brands that i wanted to tell you guys about today that have some really interesting products that i think you'd be interested in for christmas or for um or for like beyond that so the first brand I actually want to tell you about is actually a brand from Africa. The designer is called Taibo Bakar. He's from Mozambique. Where is Mozambique? Mozambique actually borders with Tanzania, but to the south. Okay. So it borders with Tanzania, but to the south. Um, people from Mozambique are called Mozambicans. <laughs> they speak Portuguese. So if you're watching this and you're from Brazil or you're from Portugal, you can go to Mozambique and everyone can understand you. They are fluent Portuguese speakers. So he's called Taipo Bacar. Um, that's the name of the designer. And that is the name of his brand as well. Um, I think that this brand is very indicative of how people who live in Africa, how we dress today. People have this idea of the way Africans dress and look, and it's not <laughs> how people dress here on the daily. So I think um, he does menswear and women's wear. He has one retail outlet in Maputo, which is the capital of Mozambique. It's in this hotel. I think it's called the Gloria Hotel. He does menswear and women's wear. I think he's got a very interesting perspective on this idea of the sleek cosmopolitan African fashion silhouette. A lot of people think that people here, broadly speaking, the continent, but I would definitely say my country for sure. I'm pretty sure it's the same in Mozambique and South Africa and Kenya and Nigeria, Ghana, etc. People think like we all dress the same. Everyone wears, you know, prints every day. Everyone wears headscarves every day. It's, it's just not like that. You know, I wear headscarves from time to time in my videos, um, but not all the time, you know? Um, and I would say most people here, people do just wear westernized clothing here and people have been doing it for decades. It's nothing new here. But what's actually quite exciting is that people are taking a lot of like Western silhouettes and infusing them with these beautiful African um, colors, um, African textiles, African prints, but also making them look fresh for how people dress here today. Like how young, for example, the Gen Z of Tanzania or of Mozambique, I feel like they'd be very much aligned with this brand. And I feel like the way he's designing his um, ready to wear, the accessories, the handbags, I think it's very indicative of how people here who are, who are under the age of 50 for example how they want to dress that's how i feel so i wanted to let you know about um his brand and i was very um, intrigued by his instagram it's a very cohesive looking brand um the pricing of the bags is like from 700 dollars to a thousand dollars for a bag um and then he also has like these really cool sunglasses i think i really like the sunglasses the most so i just wanted to let you guys know about him a lot of the times you guys you ask me about african <laughs> luxury designers like who should you be following i like the look of this brand i think it's very very interesting um i'm a, he, i think he's like done catwalk shows in lisbon in portugal and he's done other catwalk shows in portugal i feel like for african luxury designers like eventually you need to have like a retail post in south africa because that way people when people go to do luxury shopping in south africa they can discover your brand more but i definitely feel like he, his brand is very interesting it's very different it's refreshing to see a luxury brand that's headquartered in africa and that symbolizes the way people here dress so as you can see from the ready sweater that i've already shown you now and the um clothing this it's it's just very different from what maybe you would have thought that people here dress but people here really do like this type of clothing so i thought you guys would be interested to know that the next brand that i wanted to tell you guys about that i think you should check out is called thierry lazary i've actually talked about thierry lazary before i have told you guys so many times Go check out this brand. Do not sleep on this brand. You are going to regret it, okay? So Thierry Lazary is a French fashion, um, like well, French eyewear designer, but a luxury eyewear designer. And he just does sunglasses. He does optical frames. And he does sunglasses as well, obviously, for the sun. You must check out this brand. He does women's and men's. You can trust me because I've been wearing glasses since I was five. So if I tell you <laughs> that 
you should go check out this brand, you should. I remember buying his, his sunglasses in 2014. I bought this model that I cannot say the word. Some of you watch my videos with your children, so I'd rather not say it. It's quite a naughty word. Um, um, I don't know if he's, I don't know if that model is still being made. I think it has been discontinued now, but I remember literally anywhere that I would go wearing those sunglasses, like I got compliments everywhere. You know, people talk about Louis Vuitton sunglasses all day. People talk about Chanel sunglasses. Chanel sunglasses have nothing on this brand. Okay. Nothing. Okay. If you're in Paris, he has a flagship store in the Saint Germain. Um, area of Paris. He also has a boutique in um, New York and um, most of his sunglasses are actually distributed through department stores. So in 2014, I actually bought my first pair of Thierry Lasry shades at Gallery Lafayette. So you probably have a good chance of checking out um, department stores. Again, like I tell you, it's rare for me to like really tell you guys go buy something and I promise it's not an affiliate link. It's not anything like that. I just really love this brand. I feel like you guys are missing out big time, okay? So, you know what you need to go do. Go check out this brand and tell me what you think of the sunglasses. I love the way they look. I think they look fresh, fun, and edgy. And the quality, when I bought it in 2014, was absolutely phenomenal. I remember, like, holding it, and they felt really heavy. And then when you put them on your face, they're so light. And literally, it was like a compliment magnet. Like, everywhere I went... People were talking about them. Do not sleep on this brand. Luxury eyewear, Thierry Lasry. You cannot go wrong. I love glasses in general. If you wear glasses and you want suggestions of brands that make other optical frames and you want like, you know, luxury optical frames, ask me and I'll give you suggestions because I do wear glasses. I just never wear them on camera. <laughs> I think I probably need to get comfortable wearing them on camera, but I just am not really comfortable with that yet. So I wear my contact lenses. <laughs> when I'm filming and stuff like that. So I wanted to let you guys know about this brand. Do not sleep on this brand. Don't sleep on Ty Bumaka. Don't sleep on Terry Lazarus. Okay, you guys are always talking about, you wanna see new things. I've just given you two very cool, edgy brands that are very cool. Go check them out. Okay, the last one I wanna tell you about is Chopin. Most of you have heard of Chopin. Chopin is definitely one of the top dogs. In the, fine, in the fine jewelry world. It's a Swiss uh, jewelry house. It is privately owned. I think it's a German family that owns the brand at the moment. Now, when it pertains to Chopin, I feel like people sleep on this brand because everyone is so obsessed with like Cartier and VCA. Even as someone who loves Cartier, I want to try different jewelry houses. I don't want to care about Van Cleef all the time. Those of you who love Van Cleef, you need to go try new things, okay? There are many of you who love Van Cleef. Go try some new things and don't be don't live in your Van Cleef like, like castle, like Rapunzel, okay? Go try out some other brands. I really, really like the look of their jewelry. I like their watches, and that's what I want to talk about today. The movements that, that most of their watches have is automatic. Their watches are fire, okay? I'm going to put some up on the screen from this line called the Imperial line that Chopin made. These watches are unique and different. One benefit I think of being privately owned is that the privately owned brands have their own perspective. They have their own super fresh perspective because they're not part of this massive conglomerate where everyone can kind of end up thinking the same. Cartier, Van Cleef and Alpella are both owned by Richemont. They are very different brands, but sometimes you do see some sameness. I, I've noticed like VCA has some sameness. Even Cartier, as much as I love Cartier, they do have a lot of sameness. It can get a bit boring after a while. These independently owned houses, they have their own kind of fresh approach. I've noticed that with Chopin, particularly with the watches. Um, there's a lot of snobbery in the watch world about like fine jewelry watches. Some people feel like they're a waste of money or whatever. If you like fine jewelry, I think a cool edgy way of enjoying fine jewelry is definitely trying out one of their watches. It doesn't just have to be Chopin. You could try out another brand, but I feel like these watches look absolutely gorgeous. I think they're absolutely beautiful. I really like these because I think they're different and they'll make you look very different and edgy. You guys always tell me you want to be different. You want to stand out. You don't want to be like everybody else. I think it's definitely worth a look checking out Chopin. Um, I think they have boutiques like all around the world. I'd love to know what you guys think about those three suggestions that I have given you guys and what would you like to hear more about brands that I find every now and then. These are brands which I have known 
Obviously, most of you probably know Chopin. Some of you probably know Thierry Lazary. If you've heard of Tiger Bacar, you'll tell me. But I'm always finding out um, brands like on my own when I'm researching for my own <laughs> needs and my own passions. So if you're interested in these types of videos, you let me know. Make sure you drop a like and you yeah subscribe to my channel. You hit notifications. You join me in the Facebook group as well. Um, in the group, actually, we've been talking a lot about Boucheron, which is another very famous fine jewelry house. So I'll be talking about Boucheron as well later on this one during vlogmas so make sure you keep watching we have a few more things that we need to talk about i was talking to a friend of mine who owns a boat and she was asking me about the paris trip about what i'm going to be buying and what i'm most excited about i was like i'm probably most excited about like trying on ready to wear because that's kind of where i think in 2022 i feel like most of my energy is going to be going to more towards like ready to wear fine jewelry and watches and she was like Oh my gosh like she was she was asking basically like is ready to wear like a waste of money and it's really interesting because i do have a ready to wear video coming up but it was just so interesting talking to her because i was like well you know you you're into boats a boat's waste of money because like boats like never don't really hold their like resale value either in the same way ready to wear doesn't like if you buy a brand new ready to wear piece like you can't go put it on a fashion file and like get your money back we all know that so i don't know i wanted to like talk to you guys are you guys into ready to wear like is anyone like me like genuinely into ready to wear um or a lot of you just more into just buying handbags um and buying fine jewelry i must say i do think that the obsession with resale value in my opinion is kind of like putting a dampener on me um for some parts of the like luxury community um I don't know, I just feel like everyone is so obsessed with resell, resell, resell value. I'm very curious about you guys who are into things that you don't think about resell value. Because for me, I don't think about resell value. And it's not because I think I'm better than resell. It's not like that. I think uh, there are a few things. First of all, I like the idea of buying things and then just having them in their mind. Another thing is I live in Tanzania. There'd be no market to resell anyway, so it'd be pointless. And I don't know, I'm just so, so curious about that because she was just like, I don't know, she just she was just looking at like the whole ready to wear thing that I'm into. She's kind of feeling feel like it's a waste of money, and I'm like, well, you like boats. People could say that's a waste of money. I mean, does it really matter? Does something really need to have resale value in order to be valuable? Um, I like a lot of brands that people say have no resale value, like Fendi, um, Giuseppe Zanotti. People are like, oh, Zanotti, and oh, Fendi doesn't have like resale value. I mean, who cares? I mean, they're meant to be items that you keep. So does it really matter that they have resale value or not? I think one reason why I'm really excited about Ready to Wear for 2022 for myself is like, I have lots of like work stuff that I'm planning. I have lots of work events. So I'm gonna need Ready to Wear pieces like high quality clothing that, you know, really, you, you really look like a CEO, honey, okay? Cause you got your Ready to Wear on. But I also like affordable um, bits and pieces as well. But I see the value in having ready to wear. Although I, I don't like the idea of like a capsule wardrobe. So you're not going to see that on this channel. I feel like that's too rigid for me. I need more space to maneuver. I need a lot of options because <laughs> I have so many events to go to, particularly here. But I love the idea of ready to wear from a more corporate point of view. So a lot of the ready to wear that I'm interested in is stuff that I can wear in my day to day life. I can also wear it to the office. I can also wear it to like church events. I can also wear it when I go visit my mum. So I'm really looking for like conservative pieces. I'm not so much thinking about resale value. I would love to know what you guys think. And by the way, do any of you have boats? <laughs> if you have a boat, drop a whale in the comments, okay? Are boats a waste of money? Is ready to wear a waste of money. I'm going to be doing another ready to wear video this week and I'll expand on it. It was just really funny <laughs> listening to my friend because everyone in luxury has different tastes. There's some people who love boats who would never think in, in, a, in a million years of buying like a Gucci jumper that's a thousand euros. I have no problem with that and I'm looking at your boat like, honey, what's popping with your boat? Okay, is it a waste of money? You guys, if you like what I'm doing, please consider fully subscribing to my channel. Um, hitting notifications is so important. Um, some of you guys are saying you're not getting my videos. I'm not surprised, honey, okay? Big G, okay? The company that owns this platform is very, very powerful. That's why I always tell you, please just go find me on my socials. I'm on TikTok, it's linked below. <laughs> I'm on Instagram, it's linked below. And I'm going to be starting my new Instagram soon as well. I'm on Facebook, it's linked below. And you can join my Facebook group. Love to see you there. And I also have my blog. Please go support me on other platforms as well. 
because this platform is very powerful and I, I want to reach as many of you as I can, but it's hard um, to get my videos recommended. They're all types of luxury algorithm, algorithm shenanigans that are going on at the moment. It's really, really hard to get your videos um, recommended. And you guys are like, oh, you're always talking about Hermes. Hermes, Chanel, and Louis Vuitton are like the only ways that people's videos get recommended. So I really hope that you like this video. It's a little bit different today. I would love um, to hear your feedback and what you think as well. And do you think ready to wear is a waste of money? <laughs> I'd love to know what you think. And what's with the resale obsession? Like, let's stop being obsessed with resale. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow in my next video.